me and Mama Neptune are healing the same crucial crow. Oh, sting up over sick HIV. She's not happy about all the imbalance that has been happening there. Busting up over oh, HIV. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Thank you for joining me again today. Ah, do you like my outfit? I'm going to talk a little bit about the place where this came from as it relates to Bogus HIV, Uganda, Africa. Uh, this uh, this uh, outfit that I'm wearing uh, was made uh, by a Ugandan. Um, as well, I wore it in my... I believe it was the Etruscans, Romans, and Greeks production uh, at the very end. You know, when you're alone, you go to these parks, maybe you find someone to talk to, maybe get someone to take a picture of you because, you know, it's kind of hard to take selfies all the time. But anyway, I found a, and met a guy that day. I think it was at Piedmont Park, and, you know, I went out on the little pier there and just did a little routine. Okay, I'm a little afraid today because I have so much to cover um, since we last talked. But I only have 15% battery left. So let's just get started. Um, uh, uh, I want to, well, first of all, just mention my book and ask that you get a copy of it. There is no HIV. Um, I have to do that every time. You know, you have to market your, your work if you want someone to participate in it. Uh, and then we're going to discuss another book, but I'll get to that later. Uh, uh, since... Um, we last spoke. I have been watching, of course, the master teacher, Bobby Hammond. Um, you know, there's so many great teachers. I'll, I'll never forget how impacted I was by Dr. Phil Valentine's Metaphysics of the Bible way back uh, in the day. But, uh, and Jewel Pukram's uh, talks about uh, disease causation. And then many of the other teachers, they're all just excellent, and I'm so thankful for them. You know, it, it's just inspiring, um, particularly when I listen to Bobby Hemmett. He's just so thorough about so many things. But I've been watching The Venus Factor, and there's so many things connected with that that I want to discuss. Um, uh, he says that when the, uh, Venus, that energy, enters back, the whole world is going to change. You know, and it's not just about love. It's about truth and being honest in your expression. And how, you know, you can't even hide these days because if you uh, have ulterior motives or ego type things, uh, you know, even in your subconscious mind, that will be revealed uh, during the Venus uh, uh, energies coming back in. Uh, Venus being that feminine archetype energy of our Divine Mother. Okay, um, let's see here. I want to bring some kind of cohesion to what I have to say today. Uh, so let me just go to the notes where I have a, uh, Venus, the Venus factor. Oh, first of all, I want to talk about pouring libation. You know, I remember when I was coming into consciousness, I went to my first major event at Morehouse. It was the Now Valley Conference, and somebody was pouring lo libation and everybody was calling out names of their ancestors names of gods I had never even heard of I hadn't even uh, become, in, become in that uh, type of consciousness to realize all the black gods that walk this planet and all the religions are based off them but anyway, uh, Bobby Hammett pours libation and the audience gets into it everybody says Ashe uh, they welcome gods known and unknown it was, it was back when he was doing that that I was learning the names of the gods and at that time had heard Neptune but wasn't sure who she, who she is. But anyway, when we pour libation and we call out the names of the gods, again, we are calling on entities within, within uh, or inside us. And that's a beautiful thing uh, to bring that energy into your home or your environment around your altar and to to really give honor to our ancestors who have come before us and have done so many amazing things. Uh, I wanted to mention here also, uh, he mentioned several books and authors. Uh, pretty much, I believe if, if you're here watching me, your heart chakra is open. The Kundalini energy has risen to the heart chakra. And you wouldn't even be interested in following me. 
It may only be 22 or 40 of you on a good day, especially since I'm no longer on Facebook. But I'm, 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 I'm respectful of you. I want to learn from you. And I thank you. You're where you're supposed to be. Just like we all are during this time. You know, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And we can learn from everybody. And uh, everybody learns from us. So thank you all again for being here. Uh, he mentioned Schwaller de Lubitz. When we first come into consciousness, we hear that name. Well, he's one of the white men, sort of like Robert Bouval, who had the courage to admit the ancient comedic history. So his son-in-law, who has a presentation that really inspired me, it's in nine parts on YouTube called Magical Egypt. Uh, I repeatedly watch uh, part four. It is about the Temple of Luxor in which the hieroglyphics and all the symbology in there is about the chakras. And so, as you can uh, tell, that that would be very important for me to want to wanna know all about that. But even in it, uh, he never mentioned us. Even when they show images on the walls, they seem to not want to show the true physical features of our ancestors in order to continue to hide the knowledge uh, of, of, of what the earth is all about. You know, but anyway, uh, please see Magical Egypt Part 4. I'm stumbling over my words here. Uh, but anyway, so pouring libation, see Magical Egypt, learning about the chakras in the Temple of Luxor, uh, Schwaller de Lubitz, and his son, John, An his uh, son in law, John Anthony West. Okay, what else do I have here? Ah, let's see. We realize that we are under attack, dehydration attack. The organs of our body, which serve spiritual uh, symbolic significance, do see the metaphysics of self-healing. You know, I had completed 70,000 posts while I was at Facebook, you know, and um in a four, four or five year period. And I did a lot of teaching, creating storyboards about the organs of the body and their spiritual symbolic significance and how we can pinpoint how we made ourselves ill. And then how we can self-correct our consciousness and heal the body. To me, this is amazing knowledge. You know, and led to my, calling myself, the conscious doctor. Because we do have that God goddess ability to heal ourselves. But the we are under attack. And, and it's all about the melanin in our body, attack on the kidneys and the heart chakra and the pineal gland. And then of course the hypothalamus, uh, uh, hypothalamus uh, and the other organs in the back of the brain, which is underneath the real brain, not the one on the outer cortex, which is the matrix brain. But we are awakening that uh, interior part of our brain, increasing our intuition, and we are under attack. Now, when the heart chakra is open, there is a resonance that is created throughout the body that when you go into a medical doctor and you take an x-ray uh, due to curling and photography which can uh, show the aura it can show blockages in the aura and they can tell whether you have a divine ka or an inferior ka or an animal ka and if you are spiritually awakened as we are you might be routed into some designer disease they call it like diabetes or HIV or fibroids or high blood pressure all those things they say that are wrong with the melanin body which really is changing because the kundalini energy is rising and we are evolving consciousness and they want to stop that so we end up in a death campaign for genocide and eugenics and all that goes along with that you know <laughs> I hate to keep harping on social isolation but it is, it, it's a horror to live daily. But just be careful. You know, when you go into the doctor or you take someone to the doctor, keep a close eye on them and realize that you need to look into everything two and three times before you believe any doctor. 
You know, I don't believe that they're all uh, bad people, but they are funded by pharmaceuticals who make money. And uh, we're learning more about the Illuminati and all these things that are uh, these people who are involved in uh, the eradication process of black people. So, you know, be careful. All right. Now, let's see if there's anything else on here. I'm sure there is that I'll leave out. Oh, Uganda. Uh, when I was at Facebook and I, you know, mustered the courage and joined Rethinking AIDS and was establishing myself there, I met a, uh, a guy uh, who was from Uganda. They're seeking information because so many people in his environment were dying. Uh, make a long story short, uh, he was happy to become a friend of mine. Uh, he showed me pictures where he was uh, speaking to the people in his community. And uh, they ended up being becoming a part of my presentations, my earlier first presentations. But then all of a sudden, uh, some uh, people got to him in Uganda. They offered him a job. And he completely reversed the truth he had learned from me and became a part of the people who uh, launched these programs in all parts of Africa. But his was in Uganda. If you'll recall, or if you'll research, if you look around YouTube, they showed, uh, and I was so moved by that, I knew I had to do something. But they showed how people had been lined up for miles to lead up to this little hut and take a HIV test. It was, you know, husbands and wives, little children uh, hanging behind. And the, the, the white announcer followed this one couple in particular, a man and a woman, all the way up to taking the test and receiving the results. And, you know, the fact that the camera caught their emotional reaction when it was learned that the wife had received an HIV positive diagnosis but the husband had not and he immediately turned almost into some sort of a animal he immediately rejected his wife pushed her out and you could just feel the pain of how that happens and you know that's just one family where that happens and so I knew I had to do something you know you know even I can't you know do a whole lot I'm doing my part and I hope you're doing the same you know people are in pain dealing with this HIV thing and it has killed 37.1 million people innocent people to date and so that can be stopped mama left had it said you know we are busting up focus HIV worldwide and we're healing the sacral chakra. You know, our sexual freedom has been destroyed. You know, sex is such a powerful energy. Love is a powerful energy. And it's like they're so sinister, they have cut us off uh, right at that level. Because they are aware of the rising Kundalini energy. Now, I almost forgot. Now, I hope this camera doesn't give out. Because I... You know, I think I talked about this in my first presentation when I got the courage to go online teaching. It was in the Root Chakra presentation. Like Bobby Hammond, I wanted to introduce books that I had read, authors' names, and uh, get people interested in reading. But this book, Rule by Secrecy, you know, there are... You know, I don't know how we got on such a planet where it's just so full of shit. It's so full of hell. It's so full of hatred. It's so full of death and dying, ruining people's dreams. <clears throat> and this book, uh, Bobby Hemmings spoke about it in, I believe it was the Venus, if not the New Matrix, whatever the ones I've been mentioning here lately. But I want to read uh, the same quote that he read from this book, Ruled by Secrecy, Jim Mars. Go back and see my Root Chakra presentation uh, uh, to... to um, uh, gain in knowledge and information. I mentioned some other books here too as well. And in all the presentations. But anyway, he says, Yet, despite the length and breadth of the information highway, the average American remains woefully ignorant. And we know that's true. That is not to imply that they are stupid or mentally challenged. 
they have simply not been exposed to the information now available. Many thoughtful, educated people in a variety of fields, physicians, lawyers, computer experts, stockbrokers, accountants, bankers, merchants, scientists, teachers, etc., are totally in the dark about a wide variety of issues in and the connections between them concerning who truly rules the United States. Primary causes for such ignorance are lack of time to educate ourselves and our reliance on a corporate-owned mass media which does not present the information in all its broadest implications. As A.J. Liebling once said, freedom of the press is for those who own the presses or the radio and TV stations. And that's where everybody gets their misinformation. They're in church and from ignorant family members. You know, people who are judgmental of others without fully understanding a situation. And so, I love uh, this guy. He reminds me of Dr. Banks. You know, tell the hard truth. And it's up to you to accept him and to do something about it to the best of your ability. Okay? Thank you for joining me here again today in Mary Scott Key Park or something like that. It happens to be down the street from my relatives uh, down from Douglas High School. So, I'm happy to be here again today, um, you know, going through my routine to get through every day, waiting on the tin clean of an eye. Dr. Damien Q. Laster, a.k.a. Kabir Amin Ra, Ampu Asar Set, Harakti, the conscious Dr. Rainbow Warrior. Be a warrior. Bye-bye.